Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's HR Strategies Inc. webinar. I'm uh, Peter Santini. I'll be your web host today. And joining uh, in uh, our session today is Reimagine Your Talent Management Approach, Technology as an Enabler, Not a Solution. Uh, we anticipate our session to be about 45 minutes to an hour, and hopefully you'll find it informative and something that you can take back to your office and help you with your uh, next uh, problem to solve from an HR perspective. Uh, so joining me today uh, is Yvonne Lau, Senior HR Consultant, and Jennifer Van Lersov, our Senior Solutions Consultant. I ask uh, Yvonne and Jennifer to say hello to everybody. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. This is Jen. Uh, so reimagine your talent management approach. Technology as an enabler, not a solution. Many organizations have invested in or are about to invest in technology to automate and elevate their talent management process. As you begin the decision-making process, there are some key things to consider and prepare for internally that will enable you to make the best decisions and ensure that your processes are ready to get the most out of your technology solution. So understanding your current and future state will help you not only pick the best long-term solution, but also prepare you for a more successful implementation. Today, you will gain some valuable insights, learnings, and ideas that will help you leapfrog past the automation trap. We'll focus on a few things today, how technology can enable HR and business strategy, how to get system ready, how to go beyond automation, and we'll give you a little bit of a demo on SAP's talent management suite, some components of it. So let's move on. So critical to HR business success are these business drivers. First, attraction. We want to attract top performers. To retention, we want to, once we attract them, we want to keep our top performers. Engagement, we want highly engaged workforce. Research shows highly engaged re workforce hits the bottom line positively over and over again. Analytics, we want to be data driven. Process improvement best practices. We want to continually improve our processes, be more efficient, more effective. We want to be strategic. We want to provide strategic value and get away from the transactional experts that we've been seen as in the past. And ROI, we want to take a business case approach to our HCM investments. So traditional HR versus talent management approach. Traditional HR, typically reactive, administrative. HR performs most of the transactions and work. Regular business hours, typically in terms of support, we type, typically focus on the soft dollar benefits, create a lot of paperwork for people in the organization, defend our impact on the bottom line, and not seen as a critical core competency in most organizations. We want to shift that and continue evolving from a talent management approach, we want to be seen as proactive, strategic, provide self-serve options, seen as collaborative, available anytime, deliver hard dollar benefits, perceived as adding value, perceived as adding to the bottom line, and perceived as mission critical, as a core competency to the organization. If we look at the evolution towards the re-managing the talent management over time, traditionally, from an HR perspective, we were known as personnel and took care of the business functions in terms of payroll, benefits, so forth, the paperwork. As we continue to move through the journey, we've, we are probably in and out of this area now and trying to go to the top quadrant, but majority of organizations are still seen as business partners taking care of all the traditional HR functions like recruiting, L&D, organizational design, comp, communication, and so forth. What we're all striving to achieve is to become that strategic partner, strategically look at talent, performance, competency-based, succession planning. How do we move and be a business driver as opposed to, a react to reacting to businesses, issues? So. 
we're looking at technology to help us move this transition and transformation. So what are the implications of technology and talent management? Technology will and continues to drive many significant implications for both business and human resource departments. For business, HR departments take on a more strategic role. Employees will become the decision makers when you talk about self-serve and access to opportunities to do things for themselves, they're making the decisions. Helps to eliminate silos, bridge gaps, becomes a more efficient process to talent management process when you're using technology. And talent practices become a key role in the organization. From an HR perspective, almost every aspect of HR will be streamlined some, in some form from a technology perspective. Collaboration and new organizational structures will be evolved because of the ability to connect anywhere, anytime, uh, in any part of the world. HR can analyze employee data and create customized talent offerings. We become a source of information to the organization to help them build new business and create new opportunities. Evaluating external technologies and making business more strategic. We then become a core competency in the organization and help them meet their strategic needs. So let's look at some reasons why HR technology adoption fails. One, we didn't do the proper due diligence. We were, uh, we were attracted by the shiny new thing and we didn't understand how it would impact our organization. Automating old processes. Old processes plus new technology it ends up equaling expensive old processes. Having the right process in place and the right technology is what you're trying to achieve. Sometimes it's too difficult to use. Too many systems with incomplete processes. Many times we don't spend enough time on change management initiatives. We don't spend enough time training especially with there's, when there's multiple solutions. We don't really have any data to validate our ROI. Typically, we may not get ex executive buy-in to the level that we need to. We typically will not get manager buy-in, uh, what's in it for me syndrome. And lastly, it's not typically tied to a strategic goal. We're trying to, we're trying to solve a short-term problem or issue. So how do we avoid this? We have to take ownership of our HR technology strategy. HR must understand technology and be able to liaise with, I, liaise with IT on a regular basis. We need to be joined at the hip in, in, in most cases. Lead the creation, implementation, and maintenance of HR technology strategy. We have to own the strategy and lead it. We have to understand how our employees interact with their work on a daily basis and how technology can leverage them to support them. Because in the end, we're trying to create a better workplace for them to leverage their opportunity and their knowledge and their expertise. We have to align your techno our technology with key HR and business goals. To ensure we align with the business strategy, we need to understand the current business environment, both internally and externally, We have to document the organization's short-term and long-term objectives. Take stock in the unique needs of each function in the critical business area. Clear understanding of how technology can or cannot facilitate achieving our strategic objective. According to the Changing World of HR Technology, a 2012 report card, agility is the new currency of the economy. The technology plays a crucial role in an organization's ability to maintain its competitiveness. Technology that supports the management and, develop, and development of the organization's human capital needs to be agile enough to respond to both external and internal factors. Building agility into our HR technology strategy, you need to consider the following. Implement technology that facilitates, not inhibits, the organization's ability to change. Build in scenarios 
to factor in changes in both internal and external business environments, i.e. downsizings, mergers and acquisitions, regulatory change, so forth. You need to create a five to 10 year rolling HR technology strategy that has yearly check-ins and evaluations as part of the process. See this as a long-term process, not a short-term process. And then we have to select technology that is scalable and flexible. Vendor dependability is an important factor to consider when selecting a solution provider. So think beyond efficiency and effectiveness. For HR to be able to make a direct contribution to the long-term success of the organization, the function must stop thinking about HR technology as solely as a means to automate. Automation alone does not drive organizational success. To support strategic initiatives, organizations should be able to answer the following two questions. How does technology enable the effectiveness and efficiency of our people, programs, and initiatives? How can technology improve the effectiveness of our organization and manage its talent. Remember, technology is not the solution, but rather an enabler, and in some cases, it can be a distractor. Focus on the role that technology plays in the management of your human capital and not on any particular vendor or type of tool. Keep an open mind and begin to find answers to all these questions. Developing an HR technology strategy begins with taking a deeper look at the business priorities and validating how current systems are or are not supporting those organizational goals. This helps create the path towards synchronizing the organization's priorities with the HR technology strategy. A successful HR technology strategy should be aligned to the needs of the business, be agile, focused on strategic enablement rather than just efficiency and effectiveness. It should be owned by HR in partnership with IT. So what we thought we'd do now is we throw a little bit of a case study at you, uh, and I'm gonna ask Yvonne to take you through a case study that she actually worked on. So I'm gonna turn it over to Yvonne, and Yvonne, I'll be your page turner, so let me know when you wanna go from one slide to the other. Yeah, absolutely. So fire away, you can move on to the next slide. Okay, so this is just an example, one of the case studies that, um, you know, part of our implementation process when we look at organizations that are large, they're global. So this is an example of a company that we worked on where we have over 20,000 employees globally. They operate in a uh, very decentralized model to this day. Um, and budget-wise, it's also decentralized as well. So when you have decentralized budget, of course, um, you know, each regional offices can actually go off and chase after their own processes and tools as well. But however, with this specific case, what we were um, trying to achieve is that one system, one process, and a global mandate. So Peter, if you want to navigate. So the journey, just to walk you through, you know, um, in the previous slides where Peter, you mentioned about, you know, failures, right? So uh, when it comes to implementation of new technology, oftentimes we focus heavily on the shiny object and then we forget about all these things that we need. So what are the requirements, you know, half done processes or lack of processes or just basically automating old processes and making this tool really expensive. So you know, this is at a, a high level in terms of the journey that we go through with our customers when we try to um, source out what is the best tools for their organization. So we always start off with, you know, what, what is a global mandate, right? So even if you are a localized organization, we want to understand what, what is the mandate for the company, for the various business units. And then from there on, understanding the goals of these unique business units or locations across, across the world. So on the specific examples where we're focusing on, you know, a global organization with 20 plus thousand employees um, in, you know, multiple geographic locations, we need to understand, you know, at the global mandate level, what are the goals that are meaningful to each or, you know, each of the regional offices. And then after understanding the global mandates and the goals, and that's how we define the processes for each of the office location. And once we have mapped out the process here, and after all that is done, 
then you, we move on to the tools and basically identifying, you know, what vendors or which tools will help support our processes, which in line will help us achieve our goals and therefore our global mandates for the organization. Next slide. So that's a big piece when it comes to preparing for the implementation of any technology in an organization. Um, but on top of this, um, uh, where we have to understand the mandates, the processes, process mapping. So that's kind of, you know, how you prepare for implementation. But the real challenge from a business standpoint, from the executive, which Peter, you mentioned earlier around ROI, right? Um, it's realizing the ROI. And part of the ROI is getting, you know, not just automating the processes or improving those efficiencies, but being able to get really good and consistent data to make these like short and long-term strategic talent decisions for the organization. So in the last, you know, a couple slides and all, all um, Peter, you mentioned, yeah, we have to do all of that stuff with automation. But if we have, you know, really good automation, if we improve on operational efficiency, we have the right processes, you know, right tool, we will get really good data. And that is the most valuable part when it comes to implementing, you know, HR technology so that we're able to, you know, uh, identify all of your high potentials. Uh, especially in this case where we have to drive a lot of internal mobility. So there were a lot of inter-office transfer between multiple locations and then being able to do succession planning, not just at the executive levels, but you know, your VP levels all the way down to your middle management level of the organization. Next. So here's what the organization looked like. So they have a very decentralized pool of employees so they you know there are people sitting in north america south america africa and australia pacific even just the time zone itself to get to that one process for example if you were to run a talent management review processes they're not happening you know on the same time uh, they may be a couple days off different time zone but how do you leverage technology, not only increase those operational efficiencies and automation, but what it really can do for organization is strengthen the communication between corporate and regional offices. And as I mentioned previously, in this specific uh, business case and examples, because everyone operates at such a decentralized level and in such, you know, uh, far locations off from the corporate offices, which is in North America, they really need to rely on a piece of technology that is flexible enough uh, where yes you can have you know a consistent process consistent strategy but we will have to take into consideration you know the need for customization on those you know nuances uh, that are specific to each of these regions as well next so a lot of it has to do with um having the right tool getting the right data and then moving into the resource planning so once we have gone through that global mandates understanding the goals of those various locations that you just saw in the previous slide right and then being able to run their talent strategy such as our talent review process our performance review process uh, workforce planning and internal mobilities and understanding the strengths and business of the organization we now have these data which allows us to focus on you know where is our talent so if you think about you know on a global scale where you have people you know in south america that could be interested in positions out in north america do we know what the performance metrics are do we understand you know what is the career aspiration so there's all these things that we need to understand and that's what we meant by strengthening communication you know between corporate offices or regional offices in that specific example leveraging technology so once you know what the talent, where the talent sits in which locations, then we need to understand, you know, what can they bring to these open positions or, you know, these future roles that we have planned for the next two to three years. So being able to manage, you know, that skill inventory for the organization is so critical. 
um, an example of how some of the, the user were able to do once they have implemented such technology, um, now they're able to dive deep into the system itself and be able to identify if you need someone that's great with project management skills, you know where they sit across the globe, um, and you know how to uh, basically match up these talent with all these critical openings that we have across the organization. And then, of course, you know, with skill inventory, as I mentioned earlier, is how you map these uh, strengths to the current and future openings. So that comes with, you know, all the planning. So again, information is, is key, it's king, and having that information allows you to better plan your resources with data. Now, you know, having all these things done where you know your talent, where your talent sits, you know what the strengths are based on performance reviews, you know from a workforce planning standpoint, what are the current openings or future openings, the one piece that is also very critical is giving your employees the opportunity for them to have a say about what their passions is, right? So as a part of this process, and we think about, you know, the whole preparation and Peter, you talked about the whole change management process. So when you implement any technology that interfaces with your employees, right? They've got to understand, you know, what's in it for them, for them to use the technology. So, for example, to increase adoption of our talent management uh, uh, program, so the tools adoption itself, the strategy, the program adoption itself is give an employee the opportunity to express their desire, their career aspiration, and their passion. And then we were able to do that through this piece of technology because through the technology, we understand all the needs on the business side, but now we also have you know, all the needs and requirements and you know, the career aspiration, all of that data on the people side as well. So it becomes a two-way um, feedback process. So when I mentioned that, you know, communication strengthening between regional corporate, we're also leveraging this technology to strengthen communication between management and employees. Next. So a lot of these things is really critical. Um, you know, again, speaking specifically to this case studies where you have office location across, you know, different continent in the world, uh, you needed something real time. So again, when you work across, you know, multiple time zones um, and you need to, you know, at a global mandate, one process, of course, there is that end goal of consolidating data to make some, you know, necessary key decisions when it comes to talent management process. So, you know, having, you know, a cloud solution where employee can instantly, right before the performance review cycle, update their career profile and aspiration. Um, and then going through the whole talent review process where you have real time, you know, calibration data, updated performance data, updated real time in the cloud, so that your leaders will have access instantly to the talent data. And as I mentioned previously, knowing the strengths and the opportunities of your organization, you build a company-wide skilled inventory so that you know, you know where you can leverage your strength and where there are opportunities. So for example, if you know, leadership bench strength is weak in the organization for a specific function, you know where you, to, where you need to go and plan your talent acquisition strategy and then also your training and development strategy. So instead of building programs for you know, um, things that are not uh, deemed as critical to the needs of the business, you now have a skill inventory that tells you what is necessary and, and where you wanna spend your resources and time on. So, Data is really changing the way we manage talent, but data doesn't just, you know, spit out, out of nowhere from like your Excel spreadsheets and whatnot, right? Um, doing the upfront work, we're defining, you're understanding what your global mandate is, understanding what the goals are, and then map your processes to help you achieve your goals and your global mandates, then deciding on a tool that allows you or enables you to follow that processes will get you that really good and consistent data to help you manage your talent across the company. So quick recap in terms of what we talked about is, you know, again, the ability to manage your skill inventory or identify your skill inventory if you don't have that today. And then being able to strengthen communication in a decentralized world. So, you know, yes, this business case was unique to the various office locations, but just think about, you know, kind of, 
the world that we're living in today where we're, we have more remote workers, uh, we have more people working from home, positions that are, you know, semi-remote or 100% remote, you know, it's a competitive market. It is the talents market today where we need to continue to improve engagement and retention. Um, you know, again, uh, whatever tools you offer to your employees, it creates kind of a perception as to whether your organization, if you're still relying on spreadsheet, you know, what, what, what do you think your employees think about your internal processes? Uh, you know, you don't want to be living in a, in a dinosaur age, right? And then the other thing is in the whole HR space, uh, we're moving towards becoming more strategic. Back in the day, you know, we started with compliance, uh, but now we're growing and moving towards and becoming more strategic and creating more value. There are more HR functions that are reporting directly to the CEO today. So we need to equip the next generation of HR, the new generation of HR uh, with the necessary tools for them to get information faster to the business. And then, of course, finally, instead of, you know, back in the day where HR is being pegged as, you know, an organization that uses a lot of anecdotal feedback, we now can say and use data to make real, real people business decisions. And we have facts that back up, you know, a lot of things that we recommend to leaders in the organization. So that's kind of in a nutshell of, um, you know, a business case of how you would go about implementing a system uh, for a global organization, but that's just one of the many cases. There's so many different ways where we go about into doing it, but the most important thing is not to focus on always on the shiny object, right? But really understanding your goals, your mandates, your processes, and then finding the right tool for the business is absolutely critical. Thanks, Yvonne. That's exactly the point we're trying to make is to try to avoid the shiny tool and engage on the important processes in your organization and then find the appropriate tool to uh, enhance your processes uh, and make them work better and more efficiently from that perspective. Thanks, Yvonne, for taking us yeah. through that case study. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to now uh, transfer over to the next part of the presentation to Jennifer. Jennifer is going to provide us with some insights and some examples of what technology as an enabler can do for an organization. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to ask Jennifer to pipe in. Are you there? Hi everyone. Yes, I'm here. Okay, I'll go to the next slide and you, and you yes, just tell please. me when you want me to change slides. Okay, Absolutely, Jen. will do Peter. Thank you very much. Um, and Yvonne, that was very interesting information. Thank you for all those details on that case study. Uh, so today, uh, we're going to go a little bit into SAP success factors. Uh, one of the world's leading HRIS systems, tell you a little bit about it and show you some of those advanced features that can utilize all of the things that Peter and Yvonne have been speaking about. Next. So transforming the workforce experience, you know, promising engagement is one thing, but actually delivering it is another. So SAP Success Factors is uniquely positioned to help you deliver on the engagement because we look at employee experience through the lens of your total workforce. So that's full-time employees, part-time employees, contractors, people in multiple roles uh, globally. So we're going to help you expand the transformation of their employee experience, right? It ensures that all employees have the right information at the right time in the right way so that they can consume it and then do what they need to do in order to connect with your purpose and drive your business results. Next. So SAP Success Factors is leading the way in HR. We have over 110 million users, over 12 billion monthly transactions. Uh, we have 4,200 engineers that are dedicated to HR innovation and spend more than 3.4 billion euros a year on research and development, right now with a really strong focus on AI and innovation. Uh, so one of the things we're working on is a like hey alexa kind of feature so you just ask and the information is going to pop up right there on your desktop very cool uh, success factors are also localized in 92 countries around the world so you can not only manage your disparate teams but also stay in compliance over 46 million people use our performance and goals module and the system comes with over 19,000 pre-delivered content items such as competencies and coaching which we're gonna see once we get into the demo. Next. 
So Success Factors offers a comprehensive HCM suite that encompasses all pillars of talent management. So we have recruiting, onboarding, learning, performance and goals, compensation, succession and development. And that sits on top of a global core HR that we call Employee Central. So that's your record keeping, your organizational management, your position control, payroll, benefits, et cetera. And it's all wrapped up in human capital analytics. And only success factors gives you both the breadth and depth, offering you the ability to run nearly all of your HR processes from a single system. Next. So SAP builds and maintains productized integrations for the entire life cycle of the software. This allows you to easily integrate with existing applications and take full advantage of your existing investments. Next. But don't just take my word for it. SAP Success Factors has been a recognized leader in 34 out of the last 34 analyst reports, both full suite and individual modules. Next. So this is the last slide, and it's just to show you that our customers come in all sizes. The majority of our customers have fewer a few thousand employees. So our pricing model is by number of users. So you can use the same product if you have 50 employees that some of the world's leading enterprises use. Okay, so now we're going to get into the system. So Peter, I will take over. So I'm assuming I have to stop sharing. Um, I think I can just pull. Yeah, there is. There you are. Right? Yep. Okay, perfect. So rather than show you a full demo, I thought I would just show you what it could be. We're going to fo focus on possible future efficiencies rather than looking at some of the, the nuts and bolts, the transactional, we're going to focus on the strategic. So we are logging in the system today as Jeff Hill. He is both a manager and an employee, and he has permissions for both. So success factors is very robust role-based permissions, which is how you're going to control who has access to what. Uh, and you can control who can view or edit, even down to the individual field level. So um, mentioned earlier that performance and goals is actually success factors flagship product, and it's been consistently rated a leader in the analyst reports. So we're happy to show you the full features and functionality of our talent management modules, including performance goals, succession and development at a later date. But today we're just going to focus on the art of the possible. So this is the homepage. Anything that Jeff has to do is here at the top. Um, anything that's in red is color coded for easy reference because it's overdue. Um, he can get alerts and notifications up here as well as emails. And we also have this great feature here called Show Me, which is where you can upload videos on each single page uh, to show your employees how to navigate around, right? So it's like a built in help system way to increase the efficiencies to build up free time from HR to empower your employees to do more for themselves. So because Jeff is a manager, he has some MSS, manager self-service features here at the top. So here's where we can look at our employees, what they have going on, uh, what they're working on, anything to do and anything that's overdue and we can give them a nudge right here to remind them to complete those. This is another great tile that gives you all sorts of information on your team right here. So here I can see who my employees are. If they're in disparate locations right here, it will show me where they are and all of this is drill downable. It will show me their skill and competency gaps right here. Yvonne was talking about creating those skills profiles. That information is available to me right here on my homepage, um, as well as the nine boxes. As we scroll down, this is my info. This is the employee self-service part where Jeff can take actions on himself. Uh, and then we get into everyone's favorite, the dashboards and the reports. So the system is easy to navigate. There's typically three ways to get anywhere. So we can click on a tile to go somewhere. 
And I can get into goals this way. I can go up here in our wonderful action search and I can start to type. And as I start to type, it's going to first, um, it's going to look for both actions and employees that have those letters in them. And as I get further down, it's going to really get me very specifically to what I'm looking for. We also do have a drop down that will have uh, the different modules you can jump to and from. So as you would expect in a leading performance and goal system, our system manages goals. Numerous goal plans, cascading goals, development goals. Uh, we even have direct links to learning right here. Uh, we can match your nomenclature. So if you call them objectives or tasks instead of goals, we can change that within the system. It's going to morph to your needs. So you can create goals from scratch uh, here, or you can use, we have a smart goal wizard built right in. And this is some of that 19,000 pieces of content that I mentioned to you. So we can pick a category. And as we start typing, you will see that a bunch of pre-delivered goals come in. So you can choose one of these. And when you go on to the next, right, SMART is specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. So here's our specific goal. The next is going to give the member the measure by, and then we're going to add the percentage in there. Right, and then the next is a checkbox. Is it attainable? And then we check, is it relevant? And attach it back to the goals and we check if it's time bound. We also have tools to hold individuals accountable to those goals, such as status updates, an execution map for visualizing cascaded goals, as well as a meeting agenda tool. Our newest method for accountability and feedback is called continuous performance management. So success factors performance can manage multiple reviews and forms, you know, 30 day, 90 day performance improvement, role readiness, annual reviews, 360 reviews, and much more. Workflows in those can be personalized and matrix managers can be included as well. Individuals can be evaluated on their goals, core values, role specific competencies, and more. But we've all been there before, right? It's January. You're filling out your annual performance review for the year and you think, what have I done on this? What did I do last March? Well, continuous performance has that answer. Not only can it keep a record of your activities and achievements towards your goals, but it encourages regular interactions and feedback between managers and employees. So in our world of instant feedback, HRS software is finally joining the party. We like to blame millennials who live in this world of instant feedback, but the truth is we all like it, right? We all wanna hear we've done a good job if we can improve on anything. And we wanna hear it now, not in January. That's four months away. So now I often show this on mobile, since it translates really well to being done on your phone or your tablet, since that's what most of us carry around with you. You know, I usually don't walk around with my laptop. Um, but today we're gonna to stay on the computer because it all syncs instantly. And that's that real-time data that Yvonne spoke about. So this is Jeff as himself. Right, so he can add activities um, that he's working on and attach them either to a goal or a development goal. And if you see here, you can actually add updates to activities that are already here as well. Right, so I started this and then this is what I've done to take the next step. And that's so now all of these incremental steps to getting there and reaching your goal are kept inside the system. And when we look down here, this is topics, and this is where you can put topics to discuss with your manager at your next meeting. And then when we click here up at the top, it's gonna to capture that and hold that in the history that shows that you and your manager talked about these items. Another great feature of this is feedback. So here, this is feedback on myself. These are linked to those activities, and you can see which is visible to your manager and not. I can request feedback on myself. I can view requests that have been sent and I can give feedback to anyone that I have permissions to on an ad hoc basis. Now remember Jeff is also a manager, so he has similar things for his employees. So now I'm in Jada, one of my employees. I can request feedback on her and I can give her feedback. 
If I go into her activities, here's the same thing with her activities. I can add updates on them. I can even go back and look at things in the past and see where things are still standing. And all this information feeds back into performance and goals, which creates this constant feedback loop. It's going to keep your employees engaged, connected, and increase the efficiencies. So our next level, our next next level tool <laughs> um, is calibration. So I'm not sure how many of you do calibration. Um, it's where you're going to make sure that everyone's sort of being um, evaluated in their reviews on the same scales. We have other tools built in the system to help enable that. This is the big formal calibration. You know, normally you all walk in with these big huge binders <clears throat> in the boardroom and sit down and discuss everyone. Well, now you can do it within the system. So as we go in, we see here this, and if you all tilt your head to the right, you will see that this is a bell curve turned on its side. So, you know, in the pay for performance culture, we have to ensure that not everybody is a four or five or we'd bust our budgets instantly. So we have to set these bell curves and then as an organization, we decide how many are going to be a one, how many a two, how many a three, et cetera, right? So, this is where we can show that and move people around. All that information that you keep in those binders is here within the system. So if you look, there's a lot of these little icons. So as we look here, this is loads of different attributes that you can put right here on people, right? Are they diversity? Are they a future leader? Their impact of loss, their risk of loss. We have hundreds of these that you can personalize your system with uh, to get the information you need on here. We can also filter it down right now. We're looking at everyone, but if we have too many, we can pick by manager, by location, by some of those codes, by department, et cetera, to make this a more manageable number. Now, when you look at somebody, you look here, you can look at their performance review. You can open their talent card, which is really cool. Watch this. And now you can compare them side by side. Other things you can do are look at their history, um, look at their profile, look at their development and their learning activities, those achievements, that's that continuous performance I was just showing. And then you can comment, make comments. So this is where you can say, we've marked them as discussed, we've moved them to the right place, that sort of thing. And then when we wanna move things, so we need to take five people out of this one, I'm just going to pull two and literally you drag and drop. So now that's minus three. It's all a bit easier than carrying those three ring binders around, right? Again, we're saving you time and effort. Now, Success Factors also has a very rust uh, succession and development module. So succession is top down, we call it, right? This is where HR and the managers nominate the successors, manage the talent pools, assess role readiness of employees, right? Manage this entire process. We have a very robust model that does that. But today we're gonna to focus on what we call bottom-up succession, which is where you can empower your employees to take charge of their own career paths. So this is our career worksheet. And what you can do is individuals uh, can look at job roles they want, right? They can browse all job roles. You can have suggested job roles towards them. And this is where they can look at the career path. So this is the career path of this role that they have to take. Well, now they know. They know what positions they have to do, where they need to go next. And here is where it's going to list those skills and competencies and compare what you are currently rated at to what you need to be to get to that next position. You can have tie development goals and learning directly in here in order to get to that next level. Now, when you do development goals, right, going back to some of that pre-built content, right? Select the goal, public or private. There is a coaching advisor, which is going to pull up those different competencies you have and give suggestions on how to get there and how to improve. 
those skills right here. Right? So this is some of that fabulous pre-built content that comes within the system in order to help be a strategic partner to re-engage and move your employees to that next level. And all of that comes right here in the goal. Um, we can add additional competencies to it. We have color coding for the status. And you can say if this is for your per current role, a future role, or just a general skill set, right? which ties back to those skills that Yvonne mentioned and keeping track of who has those skills. So now I'm going to show you my favorite piece. This is called presentations. So if you ever have to do a, a presentation, right, get a big PowerPoint slide, send it out to the board or something on a regular basis, you can now create that in here. And you do it once. So it's a combination of you're going to bring in your own basic PowerPoint slides and what we call live slides, which is going to pull up live data within the system. So every time you redo this, you don't have to go pull the data out and put it into your PowerPoint. You do it here and the data stays, right? The data is real time and will automatically update. This is like the biggest time saver. I get so excited over this one. So as we go through, I'm just gonna pick some here. Now, here's the nine box. And just like before, I can open these people up um, and compare them side to side. Again, this is all real-time data on who's here. So if we move somebody uh, tomorrow to a different department and open this back up tomorrow, that person will no longer be inside of here. And it can have compensation information. It can have performance uh, goals. It can have uh, global geographies right here. It's like the coolest thing ever. So, I hope we've shown you some really exciting next level features within our system. Uh, when you don't know what you don't know, it can be difficult to get the highest levels of efficiencies and strategies. So I hope seeing the art of the possible has gotten you thinking about some of these possibilities. Right? This is a journey. You had to learn to crawl before you could learn to walk, before you can learn to run. And we're happy to show you, like I said, the full features and functionality of our talent management modules. So performance, goals, succession, development at a later date to get you started on your journey. And all it takes is the first step, like Peter and Yvonne discussed. Thanks, Jen. Yeah. I think a uh, great overview and uh, from an operations perspective, I know these kinds of examples of how life could be uh, should motivate people to do things in a proper way to get them there and hopefully uh, we can help them along the way. Thank <laughs> you.